Welcome to Ellen at Black Film. I'm joined by my co-host, Hakeem Graham. And what we do is we share highlights um, on all things Black Film news, reviews, and exclusives. And, you know, we were doing this um, in person and, uh, you know, because of the pandemic and social distancing, we had to put all that to the side, but we decided to get a little creative with it and uh, jump on the IG Live bandwagon. Mix it up a little bit. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm so glad that we did because uh, this outlet has been really good. I don't know about you, but for me, but you know, just being able to talk about film and the things that I love about film has been a really good release. Oh yeah, absolutely. And some of the things I enjoy doing was watching films and, and actually watching series. So this is kind of a natural progression, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Then Homecoming, season two, the trailer just dropped. And it's starring our girl, Janelle Monet. I mean, Love she's a gorgeous, great singer. Um, turns out to be a great actress. I don't yeah. know if she had study or she's just a natural, but I, I'm digging I really now want to watch um, the beginning of coming the first season, not only just the second season. Yeah, I think it's going to be important um, for those who care enough to watch season one to get a good idea of what um, it's all about. Season one star Julia Roberts, and it came out in 2018, and it was uh, one of the best original shows on Amazon Prime. So that tells you a little something about it. Um, I know when we talked earlier, you told me it won, not a one, but it was nominated for a bunch of uh, awards. Oh, so yeah. Golden Globe, uh, um, let's see. I'm it was nominated for Golden Globes for Best Drama Series. Um, it, it was it was it's a decent show. I mean, I think that's probably one of their cornerstones. Yeah. So, I mean, just really quickly, season one, um, Julia Roberts plays a therapist who works at a secret government facility, and they are developing experimental PTSD therapy, and they're using American soldiers as test subjects. So things get dicey once Julia Roberts realizes that they've misled her to believe that it is what it is, and she ends up finding out that it's something much more um, sinister. So that's season one. So insert Janelle Monet, a great follow-up to Julia Roberts, and uh, she wakes up in the middle of a, of a lake, a drift, in a rowboat, and she mm -hmm. doesn't know who she is or um, where she came from. She knows nothing. What happened? Nothing. <laughs> right. So... You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of psychological thrillers, and I love that Janelle Monet is playing this lead role because also she's in Antebellum. Antebellum. Um, right. Crazy. I can't wait for that to <laughs> drop. <laughs> yeah, that that's what dropped last week or the week before, but they, yeah, they, they stretched it out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I can't wait to see what Janelle Monet is going to do in this and, and who we find out she is. Well, from the clip, I, I think I, I, it was shot very well. Um, the cinematography was great. Um, as of course, she's doing her best. Um, as as opposed to the trailer for Annabelle, and she it shows a lot more of her. It shows a lot more of her character, inner character, yeah. and it, it, she comes out. And uh, I I like the trailer. It made me really want, want to watch it. In fact, after this, I'm probably gonna jump on that. <laughs> yeah, and one of my favorite actresses is also in it, um, Joan Cusack. Joan Cusack. Oh yes. yeah, her brother too, John. Yeah, love her. She's um she has this very quirky and intentional way of acting that um sets her apart. So I'm always excited to see her in something good. Well, she she definitely is. But the weird the weird thing about it is, comedic actors are probably one of the best or are the best in my opinion, uh, dramatic actors. Right. Because they can stretch themselves, and of course they use their comedy, they use their real life drama to create their comedy. So she fits well there, and I think that's a good, uh, um, good, good fit for that for that uh, Janelle Monae's series in this uh, this this film. Or yeah, agreed, series. agreed. Um, and I think it it premieres May twenty second on yep. Amazon Prime. So if you don't Prime. have Amazon Prime, you might want to get you might want to get it. If you don't get if you don't have it, borrow somebody else's. No, oh yeah, no, no, truly, yeah, that's another way to do it. I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, if you if you really want to see it, and I think you should, because I'm going to, as soon as we get off of here, I want it. 
Yeah. Um, I'm going to watch it. And not just because of Janelle Monae. The story is impel- uh, compelling. Um, it's a weird sort of thing. I mean, these, these, uh, these, you know, warriors are coming back and they're trying to adjust back into society and they're tra- creating this mock life. And I think that's the cool thing. However, um, there could be argument made on how they, how they do it. <laughs> exactly. So, and that's going to be the fun part in, in, in figuring out what exactly they're doing with these soldiers. Absolutely. It's absolutely. not helping them. Um, yeah, I mean, th- the thing about it is perspective. They think that they're helping. I don't know. <laughs> but we shall find out. We shall find out. Yeah. So, are we on to the next one? Yes, let's do it. Uh, our next one, Queen Sono. That is a uh, Netflix film. It only has eight uh, episodes, first series, or first season. Um, Queen Sono was uh, released in 2000. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Queen Sono uh, stars, actually, I should go back, the director. And then, Ellen, you help me on this. Good luck with that, Dave. Ladiga. 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 So the Diga, and he's a, just so you know, he's an actor, comedian, director, and writer. So he he filled in on on writing some of this um some of the, for this series. So that's a really good thing. I mean, again, yeah. we were speaking about comedic actors being pretty good drama actors. Um, it stars mm-hmm. um Pearl Tusi, and if you don't know who she is, go back. I want you guys to go back and look at uh, Scorpion King. She was in that. So Ellen and I rapped about that. We have to, to tighten that up. Um, she is from South Africa, so that fits well. Um, but basically, she becomes a um, spy for South Africa. This in, I guess, would it be uh, inside the uh, African government, or the uh, South African government, because it's not necessarily a part of it. And she becomes um, very in th- uh, involved in um, freeing up the African experience from apartheid and the further apartheid. She uh, tries to save the country from these terrorists. Um, she finally does that, but, you know, you got to watch to find that out. Um, and again, through the midst of it, she's working on her inner demons, dealing with her mother's uh, death, how it, was, how, it was, uh, how it affected her, um, how it affected the country, her grandmother, um, how it affected her and her relationship. I think that was a good thing. Um, she also finds herself um, a lover. Now, this is going to be good. Vuyu <laughs> Dabula. You this guy, <laughs> you, yeah, no, I, I love the name. You, I told right. you, I love it's, it's this a strong cat, name. Strong name. Cat is smooth, and and I'm I'm saying that because um, he exudes that character. He's a leader. He looks like a leader. He fits the mold of a leader, and he's basically a, an antagonist to Queen Sono, but she doesn't know it yet. That's the funny part. Um, also, you have Kate a Licorice in the, in the movie too. She's she's an antagonist to Queen Sono, and I think this um, comes together and makes a great film, a great series. I'm sorry, um, but also also the writing is very 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 interesting. I mean, it is intriguing. It is it will draw you in. It looks as though she does her own stunts. She's a tall, very good looking woman. She. Um, I'm sorry. It does look like she does her own stuff. I'm going on it record. Does, it does. It does. It has to be. Um, she's very tall, statuesque, but yet she's very pretty. So it's really strange to see somebody uh, um, who looks like her do her own stunts and get really messed up. And she's okay with it. And 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 I like the fact that they made her a little have a little slick side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, that, that, that makes for an interesting dialogue. I mean, has, I thought she that has cool. a lot going on. Yeah, I thought that was cool. And I, I'm I'm interesting to interested to know like. How do you see her in in, in this um, in this role? Because I see her sort of like a superhero in my eyes. For me, I'd like some of the stuff she does. Well, first of all, I just got to give a shout out and say, all hail Queen Snow. <laughs> okay? I am a huge fan. And to hear that season two is back, is coming, because the way season one left off, I w- it wasn't clear. Yeah, I, and I, yeah, give it away. <laughs> so, um, you know, I was like, when I heard this, I was like, oh, my God, this is huge. But then again, I'm not really surprised, right? Because this is the first um, original uh, series produced um, by Netflix from an, from from Africa. This right. Is huge. Exactly. It was filmed I mostly in Africa. People are, not people understand that, but I don't think people appreciate what that means. 
and, and the, the confidence fact, absolutely yeah, right? and the fact that it's a strong female black lead that's kicking ass and taking names and Pearl Ducey does such an incredible job. I see her in this as um, a young, dynamic woman who's flawed, a uh, typical anti-hero kind of vibe. Um, she's mentally strong, she's physically strong, but emotionally, she's struggling. <laughs> and what I love about that is you kind of see her, her personal life and her missions intertwine. And it's... Yeah. And it's when they do that all this beautiful imagery comes to life, epic action scenes. Most definitely. Um, there's a lot of humor in it. Oh, there's, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the fashion is popping. The, the people are beautiful. Like, it's a, it's a good-looking African cast. Can yes, I, just say? I, I agree. Oh, man. I, I, I've I, had I two guy friends say to me, like, listen, I'm watching it simply because <laughs> the women are gorgeous. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and I get that. I get that. Um, but the acting is also good. The that's what I was going to say. The acting is great, though. I mean, you can't take away from it. I, I, really, it takes a lot to make me believe a character. And she makes you believe it. I, I, like, I'm rooting for her. Yeah. Like, I'm like, go get him, queen. Go get him, queen. And she does a couple of questionable things. But I think at the after seeing what she does, I'm going, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. And she's just, and she's a rogue. She just does what she wants to do. And I think that's cool, too. Never mind that she works for a whole secret government group. Right. Like, <laughs> and, she, and she needs to follow orders. <laughs> but she, like you said, she goes rogue often, but it, it, it gets really fun when she goes rogue. Right. That's true. And also, it, to check her, her um, childhood um, friend is like her co-worker or her that's equal. Yeah. And they're always digging at each other. And I think that's cool to give it a little bit layer. And yeah. in, in the series because that makes it full, if you know what I mean. I also like that um, she. We get to see different countries in Africa and the beauty. Oh right? man! I mean, Johannesburg, obviously, Zimbabwe, uh, Kenya, Zanzibar. Like, you see a whole side of Africa as a continent um, that we're not used to seeing on TV. Well, yeah, I'm glad you said that because one of the things that I wanted to pinpoint and I had made note of that is um, usually when we when we when folks of our age and and maybe uh, a little maybe slightly younger, we used to see those UNICEF movies and they show you these, right. these bull crap photos of people starving and I'm like whoa 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 <laughs> whoa. Yeah. I know I'm American, but I read a lot, and and that's that's not it. I mean, people need to really get out more. If if you can just think that, like some of the Joburg, um, Zanzibar, um, where else? Um, Sierra Leone. There's some really nice places there. They're 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 beautiful. Some of the things, yeah, some of the things that grow there don't grow anywhere on earth, and it's so beautiful when they, when they flower, and and people don't know it. So it's good to see a movie that depicts us and depicts the continent the way it should look. And it's so I love the use of just colors, vibrant colors. Oh man. And the and the music, like the Afrobeat music. I mean, it's it's a swagged out series. And I think she does a superb job in carrying that swag in such an authentic way that it makes you love her. It makes you root for her. It makes you want to see, you know, what's gonna happen in season two. I, I'm interested in seeing how much more, how much further they develop these characters in season two. Like, let's get into everybody else while focusing on the on the main uh, theme. But in addition to um, Scorpion King, Pearl Thusi was in um, Quantico. Yes, she was in Quantico. I was going to mention that. Yeah, you're right. She was in um, Number One Ladies Detective Agency. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She had been, she was in something else that was really popular. I can't, um, please, uh, was it Vegas? Pete? Uh, no, something like that. I can't remember. She was one of, one of those TV police shows. Um, I can't remember. It was a small role, but um, again, you have to go back and, and take a look at it because uh, it, it's hard to find people. Um, but she, like like you said, she's been around the block. She has her she has her experience. Um, another interesting note in the series that she speaks multi languages, of not just she yeah. She is intelligent as hell. Right. Excuse me, but she is very smart, so it makes her even more intriguing 
than 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 you think. She's not the, she's not the average Jane. That's no, she's, she's definitely scoring high on the charts, off the charts. If, it, if I'm sure. Um, and lastly, there she's in a new movie. Not a new movie. She's in a movie called Catching Feel Feelings that was also um, di written and directed by Kagis Kagiso Lediga. Lediga. So I, I, I actually want to watch that. That's on my queue to watch this weekend. Um, just because I, you know, watched a bunch of his um, lectures. And mm -hmm. I, love, I love his personality. I love how his brain operates. Yeah. And I'm he's, the pearls. I want to see how they did together in Catching Feelings. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I definitely want to see that as well. And I, I, I look for more from him. I think it's good to get, you know, us out of being in front of the camera and being comedic actors or what have you, but then being behind the camera and behind the scenes, because that's important to get us in front of the camera. Absolutely. It's a whole different perspective once you've been in front and now you're in the back. And yeah, I love that. I love yes. That. Yeah. All right. So last but not least, the um, our review for a Netflix film called love.com, The Social Experiment. Yes. yes. Okay. And what I love about this, it's locally made. DC. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I think that's what drew me in um, initially is the fact that it was in DC, um, and I was excited just to see the hood. I was excited to see you know places that I frequent and just seeing how they showed DC's beauty. So it's directed by Sharnice Fox. It's written by Sharnice Fox and Michelle Sewell. Michelle Sewell. And it's uh, starring Brave Williams, Tobias Trevelyan, who's uh, an empire and currently on Sisters, Tyler mm -hmm. Perry's Sisters on BT, comedian Kim Whitley, Lisa Ray McCoy from Players Club, Charles Malik Whitfield, and then R&B musicians um, Raheem Devon Raheem and Devon. Yeah. Shelton. Oh, and, and Jeffrey Boggs. So he's the love interest, remember? Yeah, right. Uh, to, yeah, so the, the two main characters are Shelby, who's played by Ray Williams, um, and then Greg mm -hmm. by um, Tobias Trevelyan. And a quick fun fact, uh, Marvin Bowser, Muriel Bowser, the mayor's uh, brother, made a cameo as a bartender. Yeah, I saw that. I was looking, I was like, why do I know him? <laughs> I was like, I've seen him somewhere. Yeah, so the movie premiered uh, last summer at the American Black Film Festival. But it was released on Netflix uh, February this year, February 17th. And so what I thought was interesting about this was um, well, so many things. I don't even know where to begin. So they meet and they start to date and they, they spend the night together. And then I thought that a, a, a relationship or the makings of a relationship would come from this. But she puts the halt on the relationship part and says, you know what? Let's join love.com, this dating website, and be a part of this social experiment. Let's see if they will match us. Let's see if these algorithms will pair us together. And if they do, that means we're meant to be. Yeah, she takes this stiff arm approach like she's a, a, a four-star running back uh, to old boy. <laughs> she's like, Ugh. Right. Um, she uh she's she's i guess she gets cold feet um freshly out of an old relationship and she seems as though she's heartbroken um she's really tired and i think they mentioned this they're tired of the, the washington dc bar scene um and i get i get i get what they're saying because you know when i drive past there you see the same looking folks going to the same bars every friday thursday wednesday whatever it is um and i, I guess that it gets old and she's not a she's not she's a very attractive woman um yeah, and Lisa Ray plays her mom. Good-looking brother. Um, they make a good-looking couple. However, I think it's really, uh, it was really short-sighted for her to say, oh, let's go to love.com. I mean, if there's chemistry, there's chemistry. If there's not, there's not. I mean, to add another layer on that, I thought that was a little weird. Writing, I don't know. Um, the chemistry was a little off to me. I think uh, she actually seemed like she had more chemistry with one of the other dates she had. Um, I think I told you that, and I yeah. thought that was weird. I was like, I don't know, because it, I, I don't know. It's like when they talked, it was like friendly. It wasn't like he's into her, she's into him. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I missed it. Maybe I missed it. Yeah, there, there were lots of things about this film that just kind of still have me scratching my head. I loved the beginning the intro of this film, the shots of DC, the you know the the radio host, the intro into DC, the music that was playing, the go go, 
Like I was with it. I was with it up until we, up until they left the grocery store. Wow, G Fab said he was a good-looking brother. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, he is. is. He is. I, yeah, I, I certainly thought so. Um, and I, you know, I kind of got in the beginning. It gave me Love Jones vibe, and that's what made me hopeful. Right, and she but said then, that. She, yeah, but then she said you know, the same thing. as the as the movie went on, you know, like you said, the acting just felt really clunky and awkward. And anytime the two leads were on on the screen together. It's almost like they were uncomfortable with each other. It didn't yeah. seem authentic to me. So that kind of got in the way of appreciating the story for what it is. Because I think Shelby brought up a good point when saying, um, when she was pitching the whole love.com thing, sex is easy. You can have sex. Anybody can do that. But compatibility, that's where the real struggle is. So I get her motivation for wanting to try, you know, a third party, you know, in helping with compatibility. But, you know, homeboy Greg was a witty. He couldn't understand why she wanted to go that route. But I think that to 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 question it is is one thing. Or to say slow down is one thing. To question it is another. I mean I think if you have the chemistry and obviously you had enough chemistry to to to, to have sex, then I'm I'm lost. I'm lost because that's an intimate moment. I mean, that doesn't happen. I mean, I, I know for me, it doesn't happen willy nilly. I don't just jump out the window. So um, I don't well, know. It wasn't intimate for her. It, like she said, sex was just sex. It was just something that we were doing. I'm just fresh yeah. from the breakup. I'm just having fun. Yeah, she said she said she's having breakup sex. <laughs> it it makes sense in retrospect why she was going so hard to find out. Like, all right, I don't want to waste my time with this dude if we're not compatible. But I think she was digging him, though. It's, no, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, because, she, she was. Um, what I loved about the movie was the whole, you know, component of, you know, gentrification. Like, they, they shed light on some really good things. Home ownership, um, eating, you know, green eating. I loved entrepreneurship, that. Entrepreneurship. Um, yeah. uh, the fact that there was a, a Black successful um, entrepreneur um, who owns the building? Who are doing yeah. the the, uh, the renovations of, of properties in Southeast? Because they did mention Southeast and Anacostia. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that um, you know it, it's a little bit glamorous. You know, they're part of the uh, the nightlife. I mean, they're they're pretty sharp. My brother was dressed to the nines, um, rocking a Roly. Yeah, not, right. well, not a Roly. Right, and, dri um, and driving a, a Beamer, I think, or a driving a Beamer. Right, exactly. So you know, he was on his piece and cues. I mean. I mean, that's not everything, but the thing about it is he was on the right trajectory. Um, he came from a prominent family, went to school. I mean, the guy had his thing going on. And then I think um, I think how you develop interpersonal relationship when they were together on the screen, I think, it, like you said, it, it looked clunky. But for me, it looked like people were uncomfortable, like like slip up from them, slip up from behind and grab buy some wine or something, brother. Do, do your thing, man. I mean, that's that's exactly what you're supposed to do. You're tall, dark, and handsome. Get in there. Just, you know, yeah, the sex was there, but, you know, the romance, I think, in my opinion, I think it's the lead-up. It's not the sex. It's the lead-up. How you play that game and the lead-up. Once you lead up, when, you, when your lead-up game is right, the sex is just the afterthought, but it can't be crappy. You won't get a second chance. No, it cannot. <laughs> no, it cannot. Um, and for it to be a romantic comedy, I didn't get a lot of romance in it. I think they might have kissed once, maybe yeah. even twice. And so I didn't see the romance. I didn't and see the love real. for them to be so good looking. And I was I was expecting a lot yeah. more than what I got. So I walked away feeling disappointed. Yeah. Um, I, I felt too. like, you know, the execution fell short from the story. I thought it could have really been something good but between the writing and the acting and the and the camera work it just it, it, it didn't gel for me 110 percent um i was excited though to see the art in the yeah, movie. Yeah. and that's my boy that's my friend buck he's the artist yeah. so and he actually had a cameo in the shop where he was getting coffee and okay turn around it was just kind of his back getting coffee but the art is incredible. Yeah, I, I did. I was digging the art, and man, I would love yeah. to get my hands on some of that stuff right now. Oh yeah, you did get to peel off a couple, couple of G. 
<laughs> yeah, so I already know I have to, I'm going to have to sell some blood in the arm to get it right. Wrong, but, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do that because it was just that good. I mean, good. it actually created a framework for the for the, for the Chocolate City. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't need that out. Yeah. I love what Greg said when he um, explained about the art. He said it speaks to my contradictions, and I felt that. Because that's, that, that's, that's what Buck's art does. It, it, it speaks it, to your contradictions. It absolutely did. It absolutely did. I um, <laughs> I kept remembering the scene where they started talking about it. Because when they turned to it, that seems very genuine. Because <laughs> I, I was looking at it going, damn, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. But so, um, I mean, overall, um, I don't know that I'm highly recommending this. Uh <laughs> Uh, unless, you know, you're a fan of, you know, the actors and you just want to see it for yourself. Um, I do hope that the director, Shirley Fox, uh, whatever she does next, I'm actually curious to see what that's going to look like because I think she, the fact that she did it, she finished it, she, she wrote it, she directed it, it, it's a complete project, hats off to her. Right, and right? it's actually being shown, so it's not and like... You know, that's not that's a small feat, so... Yeah. Uh, I hope that, you know, she takes away from this what she will and she gets stronger and better with the rest of her projects. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, also, I'd like to add, if you're a um, DC native, if you love DC music, which is go-go, um, if you love seeing your city filmed in a um, cinematic way, um, if you love to, to hear about Black people in DC still doing it, um, in the business world, this is, you'll enjoy that part. I mean, I know when I, I'm in New Jersey, New York area, and I see a movie that shows certain spots that I, I've been or I used to hang out, I'm always excited, even if I don't like the movie. Um, it's just, it just makes me feel like home. I mean, and sometimes it gives me a different perspective that I've never seen before. Yeah. So that's, that's probably a good thing. Um, also, um, I think Lisa Ray, although short part, she does her thing. Um, she's playing an older part. Still looks good, but she's playing an older part. And that she was plays Shelby's mother, right? She plays Shelby's mother, which was a good cast. I think that was a good casting thought. I mean, she's she. They look similar. Do you think it was a good casting for the father? No, right. I don't think so. I didn't. That's why I'm talking about Lisa. So I was trying oh, to. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> stay away from that part. What's going on? Um, but I think her and the, the the comedic actress in there they 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 meshed well together. They played the the uh, straight and uh, uh, straight and comedic act uh, during the the dinner, I guess it was. So it made for good um, filler while the mm -hmm. the main character was speaking about her her experience with her dating situation. But I think um, if you're again if you're a DC native, you'll you'll enjoy seeing your city the way it's filmed. Great cinematography, I will say that. I agree. It made me um, it made me feel proud of DC. It made me actually, once this social distancing is done, want to go out and, and, and see different places and, and, and actually go to the to the spots they they had in the movie. So I thought yeah, they mentioned right. Marvin's too. They mentioned Marvin's. Marvin's. Oh gosh, I miss Marvin's. But yeah, they did. That was that was kind of cool. <laughs> I was like, oh man. <laughs> right, the good old days. <laughs> Some strong drinks in Marvin's, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I miss outside, but yeah. So, I mean, any any last words about it before we wrap up? Well, this is a great uh, um, Love dot com is a great quarantine film. Yeah, I'm going to to moms. Go to moms on the UK. Um, it's a great film during the quarantine because if you get, can't get out to see these places, well, there you go. You can see them on Love dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next Thursday, same time, same place, uh, different topics. And just a quick plug, we also do this every Tuesday. Cock and I go live on my IG at Ellen the T-H-A great. And we just have a casual conversation about the stuff that we're watching in and outside of Black film. So please join that as well and tell a friend. And bring a drink. And bring a drink. That's right. That's a very important <laughs> component. <laughs> bring right, Tuesday one. live, right. Yeah. So, all right. Loved it. Oh, thank you, Cherry Bomb Jam. Uh, appreciate, appreciate that. We love doing it to you, for you guys. Not to, for you guys. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Time out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in, for taking the time to uh, join our live, and we will see you next week.
Thank you. See you guys later. Be there. Yeah. I love it. Bye. Peace.